welcome to our online YouTube church channel. We'll be bringing to you our online service in a moment, but in the meantime, we would like to find out if our sermons have been a blessing to you. If the answer is yes, please subscribe, leave a comment, and a like if the messages have blessed you. In addition to that, exciting news. There are a number of inspirational books written by our lead pastor, Victor E. Takumbi. One, The Believer's Compliment. Two, The Believer's Treatise Starter, Pace Setter, and Finisher Edition. Three, Can You Still See the Prize? Four, Praying with the Scripture. Five, Learning to Trust Jesus Christ Through It All. Six, The Mystery of the Brazen Serpent and seven, God's mantle across generations. Check following bookstores, amazon.com, lulu.com, bocus.com, and at libras.com. We also have inspiring and spirit-filled songs produced by our lead pastor and choir. You can download them on Spotify, Google Music, iTunes, and other music platforms. Feel free to subscribe to our our YouTube music channel at Sir Victor TM Official. God, please stay tuned.
Welcome to our online YouTube church channel. We'll be bringing to you our, our online service in a moment, but in the meantime, we would like to find out if our sermons have been a blessing to you. If the answer is yes, please leave a comment and a like if the messages have blessed you. In addition to that, we have some exciting news. There are a number of inspirational books written by our lead, Dr. E. Takumbi. One, the Believer's Compliment. Two, The Believer's Treatise Starter, Pace Setter, and Finisher Edition. Three, Still Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we say thank you. 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 Oh, Jesus, we say thank you.
we are going to praise God now, and at the same time, we can bring our offerings unto the Lord. Amen. He deserves our praise. Hallelujah. Amen. It is a good thing to praise God.
as we will be receiving the word of God this evening and the song that we are about to sing it says let your power flow Amen. as we glorify your name Amen. there is even a verse that says that let the blind see mm. as we glorify your name Amen. the Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 18 it says the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Mm -hmm. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, Amen. to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, Amen. to set at liberty them that are bruised. Amen. Those that are poor, who are those that are poor? You know, when you are at that level of poverty, when we are talking about the physical poverty, you seek to have more. When you look at those that are wealthy, you say, oh, someday I will surely be like this person. I will surely be like that person. But that is not what we are talking about in scripture today. We are talking about those that are poor in spirit. The Bible says that blessed are the poor for the kingdom of God is there. Amen. If you have come here tonight and you are not ready to receive the word of God, just begin to tell God to speak unto you. Oh, yes. That your heart be prepared to receive him. Hallelujah. Amen. That even as he has said in his word, that the spirit of the Lord is upon him that shall stand here to begin to minister. Mm -hmm. That even as he ministers his word tonight, that they shall be liberty in the name of Amen. Jesus. That they, the sick shall be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Those that are captive shall be liberated in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we just want to lift up our voices and begin to talk to God, that as he has sent his word tonight, that word shall not pass us by, but that it shall go a long way to heal us, to deliver us in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray tonight for every year that shall hear your word tonight. May they begin to receive it. May they begin to receive the deliverance in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray as we get in here, we shall not go back to the day. We shall not go back to the day. In the name of Jesus, we pray for everyone that has set foot in the flesh. Father, this Christ shall be here. In the name of 
Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we talk to God once more? Father, we thank you for tonight. We are grateful for the privilege to come before your presence, to share your word. You brought us here, both physically and remotely. Father, we pray that may your word have free course tonight. Amen. May it minister to us. Let it transform Amen. us. Let it open our understanding to that thing that has been blocking us for a long time. The Bible says that when the light shineth in the darkness, the darkness could not comprehend it. Amen. We pray that your light will shine in the darkness tonight. Amen. Every area in our life that needs illumination, it will be illuminated tonight by the entrance of your word. Amen. Because it gives life and understanding unto the simple. Amen. Father, we've come poor in spirit because we want to receive from you. Amen. Just like the worshippers have declared, we've come poor in spirit. Speak to us so that we may go back rich. Amen. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. We plead the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. And the fire of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Happy Sunday to each and every one of us. It's a joy to be in God's presence tonight. And I'm glad that you could be here as well in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Can we give Jesus thanks for a few minutes? Can we just thank him for his goodness? Jesus. Lord, we thank you for thank your goodness. You, we thank you for who you are. We thank you because you are not man that you should lie. Neither are you the son of man that you should repent. Father, whatever the enemy meant for evil, you've turned it for our good. you preserved us. You've kept us. We are grateful, Father, that we are still standing. We are still in our right, right minds. It's by your grace. It's nothing of our strength. On our own, Father, we will fail. We are just so grateful. Words are not enough to show you our appreciation. Father, despite the way 
ways will walk. May it, may it not be pleasing to you, but still you've shown your compassion upon us. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you for being compassionate. We thank you for being merciful. We thank you for stretching your love. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, you loved us and you died for us. Mm -hmm. We pray may we reciprocate that same love by our lives mm -hmm. to our fellow brothers and sisters who have not known you, even those that have known you, that we may oh, reflect the true image of who you want us to be. Amen. We are just grateful once more. We are just grateful. Six months and we are almost counting down. It's been you all the way. It's been you all the way. We've gone through trials. We've gone through battles. Yet you've not allowed us to be cast down. You've not allowed us to be thrown down. You've not allowed us to be perplexed. You've not allowed us to be in despair. You have still been there, Father. How can we thank you enough? Oh, we show you our gratitude. We show you our gratitude because you are a good God. Amen. You are a good God. Amen. You remain good all the time. Amen. You remain good all the time. Amen. No one can take your place. Amen. In Jesus' name, we have given thanks. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. So we've had, you can be seated in his presence far above principalities. It's been... It's been 10 weeks, 10 weeks, 10 Sundays that we'll be sharing on the Life Changer series. We'll be sharing on the, a powerful series called the Life Changer series, where we'll be looking at how Jesus directly changed the life of people, different people, different circumstances, different environment. God can reach anyone. And we've looked at that from part one to 10. And by God's grace, we are starting a new topic called Understanding Dreams. Understanding Dreams. And let's look at part one of tonight. And tonight's part one, we'll be looking at what we call alert dreams. Alert dreams, A-L-E-R-U-T alert dreams so that's what we'll be sharing during the next few weeks on understanding dreams different parts of it as the spirit of god wills so our main scriptural text will be from matthew 27 verse 19 to 24 but Along the course of the message, I will first of all read another verse in Job. Matthew 27, Matthew 27, it's 19 to 24. Matthew, that will be the main verse, but we'll read other verses just as an introduction to form a base for our message tonight. Can somebody shout the believing hallelujah? Hallelujah. And somebody shout the believing amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let it be so. So, dreams are one of the many ways, many, many ways that God speaks to us or the Holy Spirit speaks to us. But we also must be watchful because every authentic thing has the presence of a counterfeit. So we also must be careful, even though he speaks to us by the medium of dreams, the enemy also can use that medium to destabilize us. That is why we must understand how to deal with dreams. And once the enemy penetrates into a dream, it's what we call polluted dreams. It means the dreams has been polluted. It does not have its, its real meaning. It's there to bring just confusion, terror, and misleading guidance. So, but before I continue, just for point number two, I'd like to say that the main way God wants to speak to us is by the still small voice in our hearts. 
the still small voice in our hearts is the main way God wants to speak to us. So, uh, excuse me, uh, what we seem to be calling thoughts at times, what we call many a time thoughts, are thoughts to those that have not mature spiritually or grown in the things of God to be able to control those thoughts. That's why the Bible says, as a man or woman thinks in their heart, so is he. But when you control your thoughts, you have them under, your, under the subjection of God's rather in accordance with God's will, it means you are growing to maturity. The Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are their sons and daughters of God. So that shows that you are growing, your thoughts can be controlled. You can hear God by the still small voice. Because you can be in a situation, you don't have the time to go and sleep <laughs> and dream before waking up and say, God said this. So, but if you have practiced the still small voice, no matter where you are, no matter what time you are, when a situation arises, that alert can come up, come up in your spirit, and you know this is the way to go. That's why the Bible says, you shall hear a voice behind you say, well, this is the way. The voice does not mean it was an audible voice. That God said, oh, my dear daughter, now this is the way, turn right. <laughs> no, no, no. It's by the still small voice in our hearts. So that said, as a foundation, uh, we should keep that in mind <clears throat> because it's very important because we know that our mind makes a lot of noise, makes a lot of noise jumping from thought to thought. <laughs> it's always busy, running helter skelter. That's the greatest battle we have. In fact, I call it, I call it, our garden of Eden in the New Testament. Because God said to Adam and Eve that they should take care of the garden of Eden. And I will say, guard your heart above all things. For out of it flows what? The issues of life. So the heart becomes a very pivotal place to deal with. Every attitude, every character, the way we behave and react to circumstances or act is a function of our heart. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So now we stand here, we are growing. That's why we want to look at the dreams, one of the ways that are most common that God will speak to us as we grow along the course of the journey. Because truly God wants to have fellowship. The way you, you desire that God to speak to you, should speak to you, he desires to speak to you even more than you wish. Because he wants to give you direction. He wants to be the leader of your life. So I'm um, doing a series by the grace of God, if the Holy Spirit permits, we'll be looking also at the guidance by the Holy Spirit what it takes to be controlled by the Holy Spirit, to be saved as many as are led by the Spirit, by the sons and daughters of God. It's another topic for another time. So like I said, dreams are one of the most common ways to hear God. Job chapter 33, verse 14 to 16, is our first scripture that we'll read. Before we go to our main scriptural text, Job 33, excuse me, why a dream? Job 33, from verse 14 to 16. For God speaketh one, yet... Yeah. You see, for God speak was once, yet what? Twice. Yet again, twice. Yes. But what happens? Yet man perceived it not. But yet we still do not perceive. <laughs> Continue, please. 15. In a dream. In a dream. In a vision of the night. In the vision of the night. When deep sleep falleth upon men. Oh, when 
deep sleep now has caught men and women. That's the time God finds it that it could be uh, the most convenient to speak to a heart that has been busy all day and no focus. So, <laughs> in slumbering upon the bed. In slumbering upon the bed, when we are now at rest. 16. Mm -hmm. Then he opened the ears of men. The ears now is that dream. And sealed their instruction. And seals their instruction. In other words, it's saying that when we are now in deep sleep, we are no longer in a state of movement where we, our thoughts have been able to come to a state of rest. God now uses that moment because we have not been able to hear what he has been trying to say all through the day. He speaks to us now in that dream so that the thoughts that we had made, the decision that we are taking to act upon, he can now tell us that is not the right way to go. This is the right path to follow. But do people still understand? It's another question to answer for another thing. But let's look at where we are today. So point number four, let me say this, that it is not enough, point number four, it is not to, enough to say, God forbid, when you get up from a dream, or when someone tells you about an alert dream, because we are looking about alert dreams. When someone tells you about a dream, or you dream about something and you get up and you say, God forbid, it is not enough to say, God forbid, to reverse the negativity of that dream. That is just a step. A sign that you have victory will come to see in the course of the message. So now, let's look at scripture again to a, an event that took place in scripture that speaks directly of an event dream. Let's go back to that our Matthew chapter 27. <clears throat> verse 19 to 24. I read from verse 19. Thank you. When he was set down on the judgment seat. Who now? It was Pilate. This was the judgment of Jesus. It was time to crucify Jesus. But when he had sat on the judgment seat, uh, because the judgment seat is where the final verdict is passed, now what happened? His wife sent unto him, his, saying, His wife, Pilate's wife, sent a message to him. Same. Yes. Have thou nothing to do with that just man? Make sure you have nothing to do with that man, that just man called Jesus. Hmm? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream. I have suffered a lot in a dream because of this man. 20. Yes. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and Try Jesus. <laughs> Even though an alert has come, but the chief priests and elders now persuaded the multitude that they should ask for Barabbas instead of Jesus. Yes? 21. Mm -hmm. The governor answered and said unto them, mm -hmm. Whether of the twin will ye that I release unto you? In other words, which of these two? that you want me to release unto you, yes? They said Barabbas. They said we want us but Barabbas. <laughs> oh, Jesus, yeah? 22. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? Uh -huh. What will I do now with this person that you people call Christ, that you want Barabbas instead? They say what? They all say unto him, let him be crucified. Oh, let him be crucified. We don't need this man. <laughs> you see, the good is what we always destroy. Then afterwards, we begin to cry that 
That one was better than this one. Now, let's, let's go on. Verse 23. 23. And the governor said, mm -hmm. Why? What evil had he done? You see, he had not done any evil. Mm. But they cried out more. Mm. Saying, Let him be crucified. Uh -huh. 24. When Pilate saw that he could, he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. Wonderful. See ye to it. Now he took water <laughs> and he washed his hand and said, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. But Jesus died, right? So was Pilate really innocent? Eh? Can somebody let me know? He washed his hand. So oh, oh, it was he innocent. Eh? I didn't hear. Eh? He was not innocent because he had the power to stop it. Thank you. He was not innocent. Because he had the power. God does not consider you at authority that if you wash your hand or say, I am not part of this, you have the authority. It has been given power already to you to either release him or crucify him. So Pilate was not innocent. That is why, let me give us an example. That is why when if, you see, when Eve ate the fruit in the Garden of Eden, God did not react yet. Until she gave that fruit to Adam, and Adam partook of that fruit, God reacted. If Adam had not eaten that fruit, <laughs> God would have had a different way to approach it. Now, when God came, God started asking by Adam, because it was Adam that he gave that instruction in the first place. <laughs> So, Adam said, it is the woman that you gave me that caused me to eat the fruit. No excuse. That's why we will not have any excuse before God that it is this person that did me to do that. <laughs> there is no excuse. You have your mind to decide on your mind whether you want to do right or wrong. It's an authority God has given Every one of us. Now, for the person now who caused you to do that wrong, you will have more punishment. Mm. <laughs> because he pushed a soul to sin. No, that's why the Bible tells us preacher that we have stricter judgment. Because if we cause somebody to go to hell by preaching something wrong, we will pay. We will pay for that. So, that's why the Bible says we should be we should be careful. We should be watchful. So you see, this was an alert dream. An alert dream to help Pilate not to make the wrong decision. But because the dream maybe did not come to him directly, probably he did not take it so seriously. Sometimes someone can even tell you, I dreamed this and this. You don't take it seriously because it didn't come from you. Mm -hmm. But it can be because that person's spirit is sensitive. God decides to pass an information to that person to you. In this case, Pilate was in authority, but God chose his wife. The information came by his wife. I suffered many things this night by this man. Please avoid dealing with this man's situation in the way that you want to handle it. The pilot did not eat to it. Let's see that pilot did wrong. Acts chapter 4 verse 26 to 27. It is Peter praying now. He's by the spirit now in Acts chapter 4 26 to 27. He's revealing to us. 26. The kings of the earth stood up. You see, the kings of the earth stood up. Uh huh. And the rulers were gathered together against the Lord. They were gathered together against the Lord, the Lord Jesus. And huh? against his Christ. And against the Christ. Yeah? 27. Yeah? For 
For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus. For a truth it was against the holy child Jesus. Huh? Whom thou hast anointed. Whom you have anointed. Now he included two people. Say who? Both Herod and Pontius Pilate. You see there? Mm. <laughs> With the Gentiles and the and the people of Israel, Israel were gathered, were gathered together. together. You see. That's it. Him and his crew, they were not here or liberated from that. So that's why the Bible says the same that they pierced, they will see him descending from heaven. So child of God, that's why I want to awaken our consciousness to alert dreams. Many, many times God will speak to you by dreams. Until you have become mature to a level, you'll be hearing the still small voice. In this one there. So that's why you can see. Somebody can be looking at you. He say, I, I see in the spirit. It's not that he's seeing a picture. It's another level. Some have gone to that dimension. But primarily, it starts with a vision from inside. I can be seeing you in a place but it's seen from inside. That's why you are wondering, how is this man knowing this information when he's standing before you? So it is something that happens that his spirit has been trained so that immediately he stands and looks at people, he can be able to develop that insight that this is what is wrong to this situation. But God still, in his sovereignty, does not tell you everything. You see, Elisha said, this one has happened, but yet God did not tell me. You see, God chooses some things to still hide because he is God. We cannot question him. The one that he tells us, he tells. The one that he does not tell, we are stuck because we are only depending on him. But as you learn to develop that still small voice, the easiest way to develop it is when you know more of the word, when you meditate, not just know, you meditate upon the word, because there are many people who know the word. It is meditation upon the word, because that's the, the catalyst of your spirit. That's what feeds the spirit. As you meditate upon it more, you'll be able to look at someone and discern the thoughts of those people. That's why Jesus always descended the thoughts of people. And uh, I don't know if you are following me. The Bible says that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It is able to separate asunder soul and spirit, bone and marrow, and it's the descender of the intent of the heart. So the more you know the word, you begin to discern already how people will react to situations. That's what happens when the more the word of God is dwelling in you. People will start being afraid. It's not that you, are, you have some different things. <laughs> it's just that more of the word now, it makes you to understand the heart of man. Because it's the descender of the thought. And the heart is desperately wicked at the same. So someone can be telling you something, but because the word of God is so deep in you, it will tell you that that man cannot fulfill that thing. Someone can tell you that, oh, I will, I will, I will do this, I will do this, I will do it. I'm, I'm sure I will do it. But in your spirit, you are feeling it that that person will not do it. But if you tell him, they will argue. They will say, I will do it. But when the time will come, they will not be able to do it. Why? Because your thought has already been able to discern what will happen in the future. You see, Elisha is looking at um, the person who has to be king in Israel, and he begins to cry. He begins to cry at the person. The person says, why are you crying, my master? He said, I'm crying because of what you do to the children of Israel. He said, am I a dog to do this thing to the children of Israel? He said, but I've seen it, you will do it. The same thing Jesus, when he, he was with uh, Peter, Peter said, everyone abandon you, me, <laughs> can never. 
Jesus said, you abandon me before the cock, cock will be crowing twice. That was what Apostle Paul, when he looked at that girl who was prophesying, the girl was saying, these people are men of God, and they are called of God. Ah. The Bible said it went on many days. But the spirit began to tell him, no, something is wrong. According to the discerner of the intents of the thought of the heart, it should not be like this. Something is wrong. This is a familiar spirit. The Bible said when he casted it out, they said, oh, their means of finances have gone. The people who were using that gear for money, their means had gone. So now what happened? They began to beat Apostle Peter and Silas, and they locked them up in the GSC. So that's one of the ways to develop yourself. It takes time. It's a walk. No one can do it for you. Laying of hands cannot do it. Impartation cannot do it. It will function for a few weeks. Afterwards, it will dry up. Yes, you have to maintain it yourself. Once it has been activated, you have to maintain it. It's a level. But we are all going. We are going somewhere with God. That's why it is good to really know the things of God from a young age. You see, Paul was talking to Timothy. He said, the word of God you have known from your childhood. So it helped Timothy. May the Lord help us. We can see catch up in Jesus' name. Amen. Depending on how much time we want to invest. So, what do you do when you get an alert dream? I want to show us a few things to do when you get an alert dream. If you dream a dream, <clears throat> that that dream is a negative dream, how do you respond to that dream? Remember first I said, God forbid is not enough to cancel the dream. Just put that one aside. It does not work. You see, see the dream manifest. How to deal with the dream? The first thing is to seek the Holy Spirit for an interpretation of that dream. <clears throat> when you have an interpretation, you have done step one. Because what you know, you will be able to deal with. What you know, when it manifests, you will know exactly how to deal with. This, still, on that same one, if you cannot interpret a dream, there is, there, God, is, God is so good that he cannot allow you in an environment where there is no one who can interpret dream. Either the person who is the pastor or whoever that leads the church, or even a brother and a sister, even in the house, can have that gift. Ask them also to help you if you cannot interpret. You see, let me show us an example of that in scripture. Joseph, in Genesis chapter 40, verse 19 to 14, let's just read only that. It stretches up to 22, but let's read only 19 to 14. Genesis 14, 19 to 14. Let, let me say this before we read. You know, when, when Joseph had this dream, the first dream, where he saw his brother sheaves bowing down to him, he saw the moon and the stars, they bowed down to him. You know, he could not interpret the dream at that time. He had not yet had the gift of interpretation. Now, over time, when he went through those trials and troubles, it stirred up the gift of interpretation. What do I want? Why am I bringing that? I'm trying to say that over the course of time, when you have a gift, God will pass you through situations, tough situations. That will be a training to fine tune that gift and that anointing in your life. In other words, persecution will be part of what will be stirring up your anointing. 
No one loves it, but that's the way it is. There will be situations in your life that will have people whether you are really even authentic or not. Because troubles will come that will begin to try to pull you down. But the good thing is, the more you, it seems like you are going down, the more you will be rising. Hallelujah. Amen. God is so good. No matter the trials, the more it seems like you are going down, the more that mantle will be stronger. That's why if you see someone with a strange miraculous in his life, there's a lot of persecution around him. So much so that you can even dispute that he's a fake person. Why? Because people have not seen it in that manner. And anything not seen in the strange dimension, they attribute it always to the devil. The devil can do everything. God can only hear headache. <laughs> when God should be the one to get glory. <laughs> no, God decides sometimes to put strange anointing in people. But those anointings will face a lot of persecution. It's what will be fine-tuning that gift so that you don't go out of track. So let's read. He is here now in prison. You notice? He's in prison. The butler and the baker have joined him. Yeah? So now the butler got the dream. Yeah? Genesis 4. Genesis 40, verse 9 to 14. And the chief butler told his dream to Jesus and said to him, In my dream, behold, a wine was before me. Mm. Then, and in the, in the vine were three branches, and it was as though it had brooded, and her blossoms shot forth, and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. Mm. Eleven. <coughs> and Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup. Mm. And I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. Took 12. And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. You okay. see, Joseph now began to interpret. Three branches became three days. Yeah? 13. Yet within three days shall, shall Pharaoh lift up thy head. Pharaoh again is going to lift up your head. And restore thee up thy place. And restore you again to your position. And thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand. As it was previously. After the former manner. When thou was his butler. Exactly. 14. Now Joseph is begging him, you see. I have the gift, but I'm locked. Yeah? 14. But think on me when it shall be think well with you. Think on me when it shall be well with you. And show kindness. And show kindness, I pray you. Unto me, and make mention of me unto Pharaoh, and bring, bring me, me out, out of this house. house. Oh, poor Joseph. Joseph said, I have interpreted a dream. The day that Manda has come. Don't forget me. The day things are ripe, remember me. But you know what happened? That man forgot Joseph. Forgot Joseph for two years. It was, the, it was God that said, no, I have to take this man out of this place. He created a dream for Pharaoh just to take Joseph. Many times we forget we forget a lot. Just because of little things, we forget the many good things that people have done. We put aside all the good things, we focus on that one small minute error. Missing the whole package, the whole blessing. Joseph said, remember me. You know now, the wine, the other man, the baker, he saw that this dream was good. He told Joseph too to interpret his own. Joseph interpreted his own. He said he will be killed. 
But instead now, instead of him asking Joseph, what should I do to avert this dream? He let it be. Because he did not believe that it would happen. He thought what he had done cannot lead to that. But it had already been played spiritually. See, the spiritual control the physical. But in this life, what do you want to do to cause you to be blinded do make you to feel like everything happens on this platform? But they themselves are very connected to the spiritual game. They will want you to believe that all things are on the five senses, but a lot, a, a lot of things are controlled from the spirit here. So, child of God, be so alert to the spirit game than you are to the physical. That's why I tell people that that's what differentiates a religious person from a spiritual person. A religious person can just be serving God, but not not really understanding how to relate with that God in a deeper way. But a spiritual person has known that God. It is not something that we hear. You know him. And by reason of that, the more you know God, you do no longer walk again by guesswork. You walk by commandment. As you go with God, God can tell you that if everyone goes out of this city, you will stay. You have to remain. God works at when you have grown with God, you walk by command, not his command or instruction. It's no longer, oh, you just do, you can't go further. I say, no, this sheep. That's why if you miss God at that level, you just go home like Moses. So people do not even want to grow with God. They're not growing also. It's not an excuse because my people perish for lack of knowledge. So there is no excuse. It's just to succumb our will. It's a process. It takes time. You succumb yourself to him more and more. The more and more you decrease, he increases. After a while, you see that truly this God is good. The life I live now is better than the one I was living. But you know sometimes, when we've come to God, we act like the Israelites. We say, my today is worse than my yesterday. Since I started serving this God, it is only problems. It is problems because you are getting close to a breakthrough. It is problem because the devil wants you to give up before the daylight. Sorrow may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. Amen. Everything takes enjoyers. As even business people, they'll tell you how they enjoy. Mm -hmm. But sometimes when it comes to the things of God, we don't pay attention to the word called endurance. It's a fruit. Patience is a fruit. We must wait on God no matter how long it will take. That's the part of dying. It's not easy. If I tell you that it's easy, I'm lying to you. But to be sincere, it's not easy, but it is good. Because after it's done all, you look at behind and say, God is good. You know it is only God who can do this thing. Mm -hmm. That will be the testimony of someone in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, if you cannot know the interpretation, find someone who knows, like Joseph, to help you interpret. Once you've known now the interpretation of the dream, the second thing is find scriptures to counteract the negative situation you experience by prayer in both your understanding and in the spirit. Both in your understanding and in tongues. And then sometimes it may even necessitate that you combine that particular case with fasting. I repeat, find scriptures to counteract the negative situation you experience through prayer, both through prayers, both in your understanding and in the spirit, and sometimes combine with fasting until you feel the peace of God that God has answered. Let's look at a few scriptures there to highlight that. 
Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17. <clears throat> Why the scripture is in, it says what? And take the helmet of salvation yeah. and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. What is the sword of the sword of the spirit? It's the word of God. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual weakness in high places. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination, setting thoughts into captivity, and every high thing that tries to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. So you have to get the sword of the spirit because that's the only language that the devil understands. Your crying does not change him. It does not move the devil. He will be looking at you and laugh, laughing, say, let him cry even the more. Or let them cry. You are shouting, you are getting angry, you are using physical uh, uh, fight, which still cause the situation to stay. You say, no, use that method, you don't work. <laughs> you can only walk this situation by, by fight in the spirit. And it's not easy. It can take many years for some situations. Eh? That's, I'll, I'll talk about altars some other time. That's altars. It's not concerning dreams. So, Matthew chapter 17, verse 21. Our next scripture, just to clarify that point. 21. How bad this kind going not out? However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Except by prayer and fasting. There are some situations that the people who initiated that dream, they are not small people. Power past power. <laughs> power is more than power. There are some things that you can do at your level. You break it. There are other things that it involves more spiritual energy to overcome it. But you know the problem? The problem is that the devil is always united. But he, what he does is he tries to cause disunity among believers because the more disunited we are, the weaker we are. Because God gives more strength to those who are many. Scripture even tells us that two are better than one. A three-fold tree cannot be broken. Even the women who break their hair, we know this strategy. If they break with two strings, it will break. A three-cut string cannot be broken. It means if you are in a house, husband, wife, God. When you have God in that, it's a three-fold string. It cannot be broken. Husband, wife, they said God, pivotal. Everything should revolve around God. That marriage will not break. Mm -hmm. You want to go like this, God will hold you. <laughs> you <want laughs> Except you are not submitted under God. There are some things you cannot want. God will hold you. So, there are levels in spiritual things. When we say now, add prayer and fasting is to cause the strength to be stronger. And sometimes you must add the prayer of others. What we are taught more is called corporate prayer. That's why the devil hates intercession. A church that prays more in group have more power. A church that prays one by one in their own corner are weak. You see that they are not creating impact. United in prayer is united in strength. The Bible says how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. That is where God pours out his blessing, even as the oil that flowed from the head of Aaron onto his beards and onto his loins. When we are united in prayer, See, even for God to pour the outpouring on Pentecost, he, what did he tell them? He told them, you people must tarry at Jerusalem 
till power be poured from on high. Now, what did they do? There were 11 disciples or apostles because what? Judas had died. Judas committed suicide. He fell and he, his belly got burst. And his intestines, they came out. So now, they said, no, we cannot do this without bringing the 12 person. So now they prayed and they brought in the 12 person into the group. And then now this put on that unity for the impact of the Holy Spirit to come upon them. If not, they will waste all time there and nothing will happen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, prayer and fasting. Incorporating more people. Not everyone knows. You know some people also. They don't, I don't know. So you must, it's what we call prayer, that they can hold you in prayer. Because people always say, we'll pray, but they don't pray too. We are praying for you. But they don't pray. You see, also that one to God is not happy. When we say that, we have to do it. If you say, I'll pray for you, you have to pray. <laughs> you have to fast. Okay, let's move on. We have that in place, right? The third one. <clears throat> now, I want to use this third one to illustrate something. Sometimes, in some situations, you get up in the middle of a nightmare or a dream, an alert dream. What do you do if you get up in the middle of a dream? Now, you are being attacked, then you suddenly get, ah! Oh, you shout, Jesus, you get up. But now, see, the thing is, that dream is not over. Because you don't know what has happened in the spirit. You have disconnected from the spirit. But your spirit is alive. They can still walk. You know why? That's why, let me, let me use this example. That's why they say they can conjure people through through media, and you appear, and they deal with you there. They just arrange it physically. You just go like that. But they have already dealt with you in the media. It's not that they touch you, your body, it has already been done. It's just only time. We, we understand this thing. Michael, go and rest for me, yeah? Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. It says, being confident of this very thing. Yes? That he which had begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Why do I bring this verse? If you get up in the middle of that kind of dream, pray, pray and ask God to help you to continue that battle. <laughs> you will say, eh? Pray and say, Father, let me go and finish this battle now. Let me win. I'm, tell, I'm not telling you people who is true. It's things that have happened. They are practical things. See, let me tell you something. There was one time where I was praying for a situation, for someone. I was praying, and the situation was not changing physically. It was a particular disease. It was not changing. From one test to another. From one test to another. So I'm looking, what is happening? Why is this prayer not working? It went about five or six days. I don't remember exactly around that. So now I said, okay, let me pray and ask God 
to show me what is happening in the spirit. I prayed for a long time. In that prayer, I dozed off. I slept now. I continued in the spirit. What happened is, the thing that was disturbing that person, if I explain it to the person physically, they will never understand. But that thing spiritually, it looked like a tadpole. It looked like a frog. But when now I attacked that thing from the spirit, I got up from that victory. After that, that prayer began to produce effect. It has happened like that not once, not twice. There are times that I pray to go back to the dream. I don't go, I don't continue. There are times where I continue. And I want to always continue because I must see the end of that vision. <laughs> I'm coming back with angels. <laughs> I want to see the end. The Lord will help us. So I pray that you should start having that experience. Such experiences it should not be that I'm just saying it. I don't want to be telling you. I want you to be partakers of the same grace as Apostle Paul says. Okay. Let's leave that. Let's go to the next point. Now, I want to make this also important. If you get an alert dream also, because there are dreams also that are good, an alert dream that is good, you get up in the morning and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, I'm happy you have done it. You can be surprised that that dream will only end in that dream. It will not manifest. Why? Why? It still applies to the same point. Once something good has happened in the physical, you are not conscious of what happens day after day in the spiritual. As you can see a dream today, Saturday. That dream maybe has to manifest next week, Friday. But before Friday to its manifestation, there are events that will happen between <coughs> that Saturday to that Friday. In, your, in the visions of the night or in the spirit, the devil can turn around that situation. They can deal with that situation and turn it around. They can even cause that you get to a particular, let me say, the person you have to meet for that breakthrough or that connection is coming from this side. You are going. Suddenly, something can just disturb you. You just reach between a junction. Instead of taking the right side that you are proposed, you decide to take the left. You miss that person. It's as if nothing ever happened, but that situation has passed. I don't know if I'm making sense. Okay, let's look something in scripture because maybe scripture will validate your thought pattern. First Kings chapter 18, verse 41 to 42. 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up. Arise. Eat and drink. Eat and drink. For there Good is times a, have come. For there is a sound of abundance there of rain. There is a sound of an abundance of rain. Uh huh. 42. 42. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. Ahab went to eat and to eat and drink. And but what did Elijah, who prophesied, did? Went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. You see, he began to pray. He put his head between his knees in prayers. Why Ahab was waiting for the manifestation, for that manifestation to come, it takes prayer to bring it. Amen. But he has already said, I've heard the sound of an abundance of rain. But hearing the sound is not enough to cause the rain to manifest. He must pray the rain into manifestation. That's why many people never see prophecy coming to pass. They say that man of God is a fake man. 
Because they never go and pray for the manifestation of that prophecy. Every prophecy that manifests is a function of prayer. You must pray till it comes to pass. Because the enemy will be behind that prophecy to fight him. You know, there are some people that are prophesied to them that, oh, God will use you mightily, but they never use. Because they themselves are not in line with what will have to happen. You have to align yourself for that prophecy to take place. For example, they, they say, oh, we will see you having a child. Even though that prophecy has come, but the physical fulfillment of that prophecy is in prayer and using faith to lie with one another, the wife, so that that should happen. Because you are not Jesus. <laughs> it, the physical medium for that thing to happen must still be done in our case. They can say you will be blessed. Sit and say I will be blessed and do nothing. That blessing, you will get old, it will not manifest. But now, for that blessing to happen, you will begin to say, Father, what should I do? Is it that I should start with this? You start maybe with doing something small. God now begins to bless the work of your hands. After that, he said, do that. Go to this next one. Go to that. Go to this next business. And then now that prophecy of blessing has manifested. But it has taken instruction, consistency, faithfulness, believing in that word, praying it continuously. That what God has said must come to pass. His word must surely come to pass. He will never lie. But if you don't cooperate with God, it will look like God is a liar. But God is no man that you should lie. Neither the son of man that you should repent. What he has said will be. So, child of God, even us who are preaching the word today, if we do not align ourselves, it will not have happened. Because it was not fire that God put on my head that you must do it. But events will be showing me that I am on, I'm, I'm working on my own. Events will be showing that no, you are not in purpose. You are not in line. Then I'll say, ah, no, I'm tired of this battle. Let me just forget that God. <laughs> but it was not fire on our head that, oh, God said, you must go and pray. No, no. You look at it, you say, no, there's something burning inside you every time. When you sit, you are drinking one beer. People are talking about other things. Suddenly, you see that that beer starts getting bitter in your mouth. Something is wrong somewhere. When fight comes, it is you the hit and the horn will come in your head. Everyone will escape. You know that? <laughs> These people are drawing me to do. I'm not supposed to be here. You start finding out. You know, God, I've come. I surrender. Events will happen. That's why sometimes we struggle. Because we are refusing to obey what God has told us. We'll be fighting by our power. That's why God is looking at you. The Holy Spirit will be, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. We are fighting. We are struggling. Not by power, not by mind, but by my spirit. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So, even though it is favor, you need to pray it. I pray that favor come up, abundance of favor come upon you and I in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. <laughs> Nikki. So, the next point. Now, if you dream the same dream twice within a very short space of time, you should know that the thing is close to its manifestation. If you dream the same dream twice within a very short space of time, it is close to its manifestation. So make sure you intensify prayer on that thing, if it's a good one or a negative one. You see, I'll show us again from Genesis chapter 41, Verse 32. Yes. And for that he, he, for that 
that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. Uh -huh. Yeah, the dream came unto Pharaoh twice. Yeah. It is because the thing is established by God. It is established by God. And God will surely bring it. Back. God will bring it to pass shortly. So every time you dream the same dream twice, it is close to his manifestation. That's just an alert. So you are, you are conscious of what happens. So at this thing that Pharaoh dream, it consistently happened twice. So Joseph, who had an understanding, told him that you must take this seriously because it's about to come to pass. The last point I'll give and we end for alert, with alert dreams for tonight on our part one of the series of understanding dreams is that there are also dreams that need you to act in obedience, like I, I mentioned just superficially a few moments ago. There are also dreams that you need to act by obeying instruction. And in this kind of dreams, you don't, you cannot bind them. You cannot get up and start binding it, no. It's an instruction alert dream. You must just obey that instruction. Don't try to bind it. Don't try to say it will not work. I will pray it and change it, no. Don't try to change it. People have seen things that are negative. They go there and go and start trying to change it by prayer. Also, let me just say one thing that I miss along the course of the message uh, about praying and fasting in a particular dream. When, when you pray and fast, there must be an alert in your spirit to tell you that that prayer has been answered. It's not that you just pray and then let me say you pray for five minutes. Oh, thank you, Father. I know that the prayer has been answered. If you do that, the thing can still manifest. You must pray till you feel the peace of God, that God has answered. Then you stop that prayer point. The peace of God is the answer to an answer prayer, an answer prayer, rather. But many times, many times, we say that we have peace, but we, it's not truly that that's the peace of God. We say, we, oh, this situation I prayed, but I have peace. But truly, sometimes it's not the peace of God. What, I, what helps me sometimes, it does not come every time, but it, what helps me to know that even if I'm in a bad situation now, even if things are not working well, what helps me to know is when I pray for a particular situation, I will pray to the level that I will enter the rim in the spirit that I will start laughing, not knowing why I'm laughing. That is when I know that I've touched the answer to that prayer. The joy of the Lord has shown me that it's my strength to take me through that situation. For me, that's what I take to know. Because the peace is not enough for me. Because the heart is desperately wicked and deceitful. It can deceive me when I think it's really peace. But the spirit will hardly lie when I've connected to it effectively. Hallelujah. Amen. So I pray that God helps us to pray until we get that peace. That peace. That peace must bring joy overflow. Amen. That peace must bring joy overflow. So the last one, as I was saying, is... Um, that you cannot do anything to bind it. You must just obey the instruction. Matthew chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. So that's <clears throat> our last scripture for tonight. 13. Mm -hmm. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. You see? The angel now came to Joseph in a dream. Say, arise and take the young child and his mother and uh -huh. flee into Egypt. Yeah. And be thou there until I bring thee word. Hey. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Uh -huh. 14. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. Okay. Does this ring something in your head? 
Does this tell us something? What does it tell us? This was an instruction. Eh? instruction. Exactly. It's an instruction. But on top of that instruction, I just want to bring us into a thought pattern. Yes. It's exactly an instruction. He could not do anything. It's just to run. But is, is God not Jehovah mighty in battle? The one who lift up and bring down. The one who says yes and no one can say no. But how can God be fearing battle? You know in the young age we say you the fear fight. <laughs> how can God be afraid of battle? No, now there's a principle here to learn. Means that God is a God of principle. God is a principle God. That's why people get confused of God sometimes in his ways. God is principled. If you jump from this building down, angels will not hold you. In fact, they will be waiting you down for you to land well for your barrier. Because what? You've got a great principle, gravity. Yeah, you don't play with gravity. <laughs> so, <laughs> you will not be a person in Jesus. So God is a God of principle. His principle remain. If you bypass them, God will not fight for you there. He's not there. That's why the Bible says, do not tempt the Lord your God. If he say run, run. Because here, he's respecting the principle of authority. That's why he say, pray for those in authority. Because they can use that authority to wipe your hand like John the Baptist. You didn't hear what I said. <laughs> I, I knew, yes, you go to heaven, but <laughs> when God say wrong, God, don't try to go and pray it and change it. He said, "My uh, the psalm he said, my enemies are stronger than I." God said, "Go and hide in Egypt. The time that I have dealt with Pharaoh, I will deal with him in my own time." But not your time. Now, I, I showed us last week how purpose allow people to gain time for repentance. So God will be waiting for him to repent. If he doesn't repent until the appointed time, he goes. When he went now, God brought bad news for them to come back. May God bless his word. Amen. We'll continue next week. I pray you'll be blessed tonight. We'll continue understanding dreams. If you've not known Jesus, all what we are saying is not your portion. You want to rededicate your life to him, it's still a good thing. The Bible says there's joy in heaven over one soul that comes to Jesus. And I just want you to say a simple prayer with deep conviction. Not that we are telling you to pray now. If you are not ready, you don't need to pray it. But the Bible says, days may come, but no two days are the same. So, if you hear the word also, harden not your heart. So I want to encourage you, viewers online and those with us here, that really think of it. It should be a sincere, sincere thought, sincere thought process that, oh, I want to Jesus, I acknowledge I'm a sinner. And we pray together. We want to say, Lord Jesus. I believe you are my Lord and Savior. You died on the cross for my sins. I agree I'm a sinner. Wash me pure with your precious blood. Sanctify me holy. In the name of Jesus. You rose from the dead, Lord. And you are seated at the right hand of the Father. I receive grace to walk with you. 
When you come, Lord, may I be found worthy before you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. That simple prayer translates your spirit or your soul from the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. Physically, nothing changes. But spiritually, your soul has been moved so that you can live the life that God has for you. And we thank you for making that commitment in Jesus' name. Amen. We just want to pray now because we all are on the same platform. Our first prayer point is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16 to 18. We want to pray and say, Father, open the eyes of my understanding. Grant me the spirit of wisdom. Open the eyes of my understanding of my family members, of my children, that they may see and walk with you. In Jesus' name. Father, the spirit of wisdom and revelation of the knowledge of you upon us and our family members. Father, we pray, may it come upon us. By your spirit, we surrender ourselves to you so that we can be able to receive your spirit of revelation and understanding in the knowledge of you, O Father. We bless you, we bless you, we bless you. We bless you, we bless you, we bless you. And we believe, O Father, your spirit of revelation and wisdom in the knowledge of you is being released unto us. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Let's power that prayer in thanksgiving. Father, we thank you. Our next prayer point is Judges chapter 5, verse 20. Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for answer prayers. We've been praying this prayer point for a long time. You already know it. They fought from heaven. The stars in their courses fought against Sisera. We want to pray against every power monitoring our star. We want to pray and say, Father, Father in, the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let my star, let my star the star of my children, the star of my, children, the star of my family members, of my family be released be release from the power of darkness. Power of darkness. Let, your light let your light shine upon those stars, upon those stars. in the name of Jesus in Christ. Power in the spirit and in your understanding. Sabalendos, Ibrakashago barada da 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 desh. Ite no kolo kodo soko bodo do do do. Linde zupra di zaga boro kodo seke de. Ite poshege bujaga da. Lande saka bora da dendos. Ila tonda le kotonda la tadanda. In Jesus name we are prayed. Thank you, Lord, for answer prayers. As we prepare for the next prayer point, let's just thank God. Let's thank Him. Let's thank Him. Let's thank Him. Father, we thank you for answer prayers. Thank you for answer prayers. Jeremiah 32, 27. Jeremiah 32, 27. The Bible says, anything too hard for God to do, I want you now to pray. You know the things that you want God to do. If it's you, you have already prayed them, it's still good. You can only give him thanks now. But you know those things that are hard. But he said, is anything too hard for me? You can tell him those hard things that are beyond your capacity. He said, cast your body down to me, for I care for you. You want to cast those bodies that you feel that they are beyond your power. You say, I've tried, but Lord, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. I've done my part, but Lord, help me, grant me wisdom. I find myself in this situation, I know no way out. 
The Bible says wisdom is profitable to direct us. May he grant us insight, information, either through dream or any way. You want to take that moment to pray to him now. I give you the opportunity. Talk to God. He's a God that wants us to communicate with him. Tell him your heart. Tell him your bodies. Liza Poraga in the spirit and in your understanding. Sheboko Zabaleke do Zeprana Sakabos. Ikanu Salagadendo Sapalete. Ibrana Teko Dagada Dabadenda Dada Sepe Lakadoso. Ibakada Baradanarana. Rabo Sheke do Shagabaragadele. Ibakada Baradanarade. Imbrakada Dadadadele. In the name of Jesus we are praying. Let's just power it in thanksgiving as we use Psalm 69 verse 30 as our last prayer point to give him thanks. The Bible says that I will praise the name of God with a song and I will magnify him with thanksgiving. I will praise the name of God with a song and I will magnify him with thanksgiving. Just thank him, thank him, thank him. This is the confidence that we have if we ask anything according to his will. He hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we have the petition of that which we've prayed. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We are grateful. 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 We bless you and magnify you, Father. Lebra no se kya palada si ya oda la kate de suda diya ada e pleno si la kotale e londo si ya e to la sata e prana zuda liya ede e ke du sakata lada e pano salane e do salia ate e kota la shada Father, we magnify your name. It's been you that has been lifted in our midst tonight. You have glorified your name in your in our midst. Lord, we are grateful for the open doors you are doing, the things you are doing now, the healing, the touches you are you are doing now, the journey in mercies you are bringing those back and forth safely. We give you praise, we give you praise, we give you praise, we give you praise for watching over us, for doing that which only you can do. We are grateful, we are grateful, we are grateful, we are grateful. We acknowledge your lordship, we acknowledge your hand and manifestation. In Jesus' name we are praying. Can we move very quickly to our communion service? Father, we thank you. The same verse not changes from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, day of. The Bible says, Apostle Paul speaking by revelation, the same night that he died, he took the bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it, and he said, this is my body. As often as you eat of it, you eat it in remembrance of me. He took the cup and he sucked it and he gave each and every one of them and he said this is the cup of the blood, the blood of the new covenant. As we partake of his body and blood tonight symbolically, we believe that we are waking our consciousness to him again. So we pray, oh Father, as we partake, oh Father, everything that is not working in our lives, let it begin to work in the name of Jesus. We pray even for those watching online, Father. May they, oh God, take a piece of bread, you watching, take a piece of bread, you watching, and some juice, and also partake. May they also partake of the same grace, oh Father, in the name of Jesus. May there be no disconnection between us here physically and them in the name of Jesus. We pray, oh Father, you visit them by reason of this communion in the name of Jesus. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Feel free to share up the communion and it's no pressure. If you don't feel like sharing, don't worry about that. It's not a sin. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for the communion. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Jesus.
We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for the communion tonight. We thank you. It's working in our lives. We thank you, it's working in our lives. It's working in our lives in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are happy to receive our guests. Yeah, our sister all the way long from the north. We know her. I don't need to call her name again. We already know her. So we are happy that you are here. Our brother, we are happy to have you in our midst. God bless you for being here with us. God bless you mightily in Jesus' name. For the announcement, because we are running time after time and we have to close, um, our wedding is on this Saturday, the 25th. 25th. Can we make some noise for Jesus? So, 25th, we are starting from 2 p.m., 2 p.m., 2 p.m. church service, 2 p.m. Swedish time, Central Europe time, 2 p.m. So, women, please cook in the night. I don't know how you people do it. Cook in the night, sleep in the day. Put it in the freezer. Warm it in the hall. Because every time it is food that will delay us. And then please, bride and bridal team, start making your hair this week. Before a month they start doing their hair and then if you during the week they should only add finishing touches. <laughs> Don't wait last minute and say, Oh, there were many people there. I was not on time. You see. You know, people always come from far. They are there sometimes at that 2 p.m. And we in the house, we are coming late. So I'm pleading with us to try to... We have tried the other means, it has not worked. Let's change the strategy this time. If you have been cooking that way, you are always late. Try to change another method. I know there are some things they cannot cook during the day. But think of it where there must be a way. Where there is a will, there is a way. Amen. Yes, I know there is a way. So that we keep on time and we can follow the schedule. So also, also tell the makeup artist so they should do their job on time. If the eyelashes delay, just come like that. Don't worry. <laughs> we'll still bless you anyhow you people come. <laughs> That's the most important thing, you see. So, but I'm just giving us a head up before the time so so that we should be aware it's 2 p.m hallelujah Amen. and don't forget to put it also in prayers because it's an occasion it's a garden and we pray that god should take people back and forth safely during the day let no event or anything happen negatively Amen. this is also something we need to put in prayer mm -hmm. we cannot be just uh, negligent about that your prayer will help. Amen. Your prayer will help. So do something also in the spiritual light. And thank you in Jesus' name. Can we just thank God and close for tonight? Father, we thank you for speaking to us. We thank you for being in our midst. We thank you for the intercession. We thank you for the worship and praise. We thank you for the worshipers you use. We thank you for the word. We thank you for using me. We thank you for the reader of the scriptures. We thank you for the technical team. We thank you for even those who are here viewing us and those who have been in service today. We pray for the laborers, feed them again with fresh oil. Amen. May a fresh oil come upon our lives again in Jesus' name. Amen. So that we may continue to deliver in your presence, O oh Father. That we may be able to bring your presence in the midst of your people. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We pray even as we are entering into this week, let your angels go ahead to break in asunder the gates of brass and the bars of iron. We pray you cover everyone with the blood of Jesus. Keep us under the shadow of your wings. Hide us by your fire. Protect us by your hedge that nothing should penetrate in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we pray that also, may your angels bring good news this week. Amen. May healing be the where there is sickness. Yes. May breakthrough come where there is stagnation. Where fruitfulness come where there is barrenness. Yes. We declare multiplication where there is lack. Amen. We declare favor where there has been rejection. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. we have prayed. Amen. God bless you all and shalom and shalom.
I wish you a blessed week ahead in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me see. Let me help you. Okay. Hi. Hope you were blessed by today's message. As we prepare to close for tonight, we want to encourage you to take a few minutes to leave a positive comment, a like and also to subscribe if you have been blessed by today's message. Please click the notification bell so you can get notified next when we are online. God bless you and we hope to see you again. Send testimonial to this email address and inquiries. blessed by today's message as we prepare to close for tonight we want to encourage you to take a few minutes to leave a positive comment a like and also to subscribe if you have been blessed by today's message